general session. Nobody else would think. The mission of the Runby Public School is to provide a successful educational experience for all children. To this end, we expect all students to achieve the New Jersey Core Curriculum Content Standards at all grade levels, and we will ensure the following. Demonstratively effective instructional programs that will be aligned with the NC NJCCCS, a safe, clean, and healthy environment, a motivated, committed, and skilled staff who are highly qualified in their content areas, collaboration between schools, parents, and community, and managerial and fiscal accountability. I'd like to call this meeting to order at this time. The Rummy Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 and the Open Public Meetings Act. The, date, the time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect as well as posting notices in the Borough Hall, Runnemey Post Office, Maryville School, Alleen Bingham School, Grace Downing School, and the Runnemey Public School District website. At this time, if you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Ms. Beebe. Here. Mr. Buckon. Here. Ms. Davidson. Here. Ms. Ferry. Ms. Panzarella. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Ms. Trillo. Here. Ms. Walden. Thank you. Also present is Mark Iogiar, Superintendent, Trauma Karen, School Business Administrator for Secretary, Carl Lassie, who is the Business Consultant, Jada Bay, Yezzy, Principal, Bingham and Downey Schools. Steve Peely, Mayor Hall School Principal, uh, Mr. Winchell Speck, thank you. Okay. Vice Principal is here, Lori Hines, nice all come in, Child Study Team Supervisor, and Bush Brunner, our Supervisor for the US. At this time, I, I need a motion on the floor to recommend that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the following meetings listed below from May 21st. I'll make a motion. Pat? Second. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Buckhunt? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? I need to abstain from the special session and the work session. Um, so one and two, I need to abstain from three and four. Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Trello? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Can I please have a motion at this time for the financial report? Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Buckhunt? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Torello? Yes. Those are passes. At this time, we would like to recognize the citizens uh, for public comments on agenda items only. The public is reminded that they should attempt to resolve problems and complaints to initial contact with the staff member or members involved therein and the chief school administrator prior to petitioning the Board of Education. Complaints should only be brought to the board after the appropriate school staff has had a reasonable, reasonable opportunity to resolve the problem at the employee level. Statements should be limited to topics to be addressed on the published agenda and limited in length to three minutes. Please, if you are going to make any comments, uh, be recognized by the board, state your full name and address, identify the resolution item that you would like to comment on, wait to be recognized to make your comment, and please limit your comments to that specific item, and limit your comments to the three minutes. At this time, is there anyone from the public would like to make comments? Seeing none, thank you. Secretary. Um, okay. Um, here. This month we um, were very busy in the business office. Retro checks went out last week to staff members. Um, that was prior, we were hoping to get them out after the 18th, once teachers left, but we were able to get them out prior to the 15th. So we're very pleased with that. Um, we, everything's looking good. We're just trying to clean up the rest of this school year. 
So that way we can roll over into the 14-15 school year for July 1 and get everything in order and approved for next year. And as I discussed that, many staff members do not want to hear me discuss next year at this point in time. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's definitely what my mind has been on. So. <laughs> I get very excited. So. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you. At this time, our superintendent's report. All right, uh, just to highlight a couple items. District enrollment for the uh, 47 students in our academic replacement that I listed there. Um, we did talk about the uh, cafeteria and playground aids in our last meeting and the re restructuring of our food service program. Uh, Dr. McCarran and I met with, I'd say, all of our staff members at some point uh, following that meeting, our last board meeting to discuss that. Uh, they were given the opportunity to apply for the Positions. I'm happy to say that most of our staff will be returning for the following school year. Um, and that cut our work hours down in our food service program directly. Um, all sense of those costs. Um, as far as my own professional development, wrapping up my training certification program for my mentor. Um, I'm meet with him next week, actually. And then processing the paperwork over the summer, which is always fun. For that standard certification to be issued. Policies we met about last week at the last month's meeting. We did talk about tweaking some of those policies, which we did over the summer. And I listed there like things such as attendance requirements, athletic participation, evaluations, and those county submission deadlines. So those things will be discussed at the August meeting and just get detailed and finalized, and then we'll have a, a reading and then we'll do another reading in September for that. And your activities, we had all the transition days from the kindergarten orientation, third grade orientation. It's nice to see the eighth grade dance. Well, the PTA goes above and beyond. So thank those PTA members that help, as well as staff members. And then we had graduation the other night. I want to thank Mr. Buckheim and Mrs. Smalling for helping present those awards and diplomas. Again, just a reminder to all board members of the public, there is no meeting scheduled for July, and our summer hours do begin on Monday. If there's any questions regarding summer hours, what's going on this summer, we're happy to talk with you. Stop on over. We are here. We are not here on Friday. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff to do. We're looking to enhance some of the good things that are going on here. I do want to publicly thank uh, Mrs. Hines, Mr. Winkles, Mrs. Yezzy, Mr. Peely, and uh, Mr. Russell, and Dr. McCarran uh, for our first year. Dr. Gray, From an administrative standpoint, to have a brand new administrative team um, and have it run smoothly for the most part, there are obviously areas that I need to do a better job of. Are supporting some of our administrators, and all of our administrators, but um, I think this is a very successful school year. Uh, I think the, the feedback we've gotten from not only the students but the parents has been wonderful. So I'm for that. I can thank you. Thank you. And that is my report for this evening. Thank you. And any board members, if you want to follow along, I just want to uh, especially thank Errol for your efforts to help bring uh, some sensibility and some great training for our new board secretary. Your efforts have not been unnoticed. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, we had some other board members at the graduation the other night, and the graduation was a wonderful activity. And what a charming group of young men and women that are moving on down to high school. Great job. Uh, we'll move on to the principal reports. We'll start. Any, any comments? I'll stick with Mr. Peel. I'll stick with Mr. Yazzie. Ah. <laughs> the school year is over. All right. <clears throat> I'll report further in September. <laughs> Supervisor curriculum instruction. Everything is good. Um, one thing that myself and the principals and administration has worked on was a professional development schedule tended in for 14-15. So at least we have an outline now um, as far as what we're looking to for next year, and that's shared on the back of my report. Um, to make sure that all mandated trainings are in and that we have an idea of what direction we're going in, what initiatives we're going to be focusing on for the 14-15 school year. I think we've set great groundwork for this year and I'm looking forward to continuing that and building on that. Um, we, we acknowledge the fact that we have put a lot on our teachers 
and I will say that they have accepted the challenge wholeheartedly. Um, and now instead of adding anything else, we're looking to build on what we currently have and really develop the programs that we have in place. Any comments on the nurses' reports? Um, I have a quick question. And it's actually, that I'm looking, it's actually on the back of um, Mr. Peely's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really easy, though. It's an easy question. Apparently, they're changing the way we do physicals, right? Well, yeah. So, this 90 day, every 90 days, a new health history update questionnaire has to be filled out by the parent? So who is going to be able to keep track of that? Well, I, I know that, I, I don't know the particulars, but I know that the nurses are very concerned with some of these. These are all state mandates, yeah, and yeah, measure. Right. Um, the nurses are concerned with the burden on parents, um, how we're going to keep that line of communication over. And I think the nurses actually took some time today to try to find the best way to streamline it. So I'm sorry that I don't have a definitive answer for you, but I can say that, unfortunately, until one of those things, the state says, you guys got to do, and then we're going to pay full that burden the parents, and both we're going to try to find the best way to accommodate parents and, you know, and, and most importantly, make sure kids are eligible to play. Because that's the most important. So, uh, uh, we'll update you. How was that? We'll update you as a, uh, Ms. Kerslick has had me place the forms online, so they are available for parents to print online. But as Mr. Pillow was saying, it's a lot of mandates, not only on the parents, but also on the physicians, yeah. who have to be certified also and provide their certification with each day as they receive it. Way of <laughs> <laughs> well, is it grounds? Oh. Is, isn't it more of a parental update versus a it, it, it is parental. It's totally right. parental. It's, it's not a physician's update. Right. But it is a lot on the parent. Well, if yes. your child falls and breaks her arm, you have to report that. Sure. It's, it's more for, like, the children who are, like, passing out in gym class and stuff like that. There was, like, a, a diagnosis before, like, in the last 90 days that could have been passed over to the school administration, right. and it's not being done, which is why the state mandated it. But the bigger issue is it's going to be more of a burden on the administration right. in the schools because they're going to have to, they're going to be the ones following up. I understand how we're all saying it's a burden on the parents, but let's think of, you know, the, the people in the schools who are going to have to constantly do this. For a parent, it's you and your couple children, you and your couple children. For you, it's 800 and something children. You, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so. so now these kids, these parents have to sign this questionnaire every 90 days for their kids to continue yep. in activities within the district. Yeah, it's just it's not Ms. Um, Beebe, and actually that's not too far off of what we are currently doing. Right. In other words, if you look at the soccer season, field hockey season that starts in September, mm -hmm. that runs primarily through Easy. the end of October, which is your first two months. Right. Basketball then starts at the end of November, right. which would be your 90th day, so then right. you fill that out for Again, the, right. for the which you currently do now, you currently do now. And then yeah. in the fall, in the spring, you do that as well for any spring sports you do. So, in general, the onus is still on the parent to upgrade that. That's a must. Used to be able to just do that permission slip, you know, once and then kind of fill it out and give permission again for the next sport. Now it's more of a questionnaire to involve any updated health. Mm -hmm. Kid breaks her arm, breaks her wrist, or whatever. Okay. So, so then what you have to do then is just attach that form to the back of the plate. Yes. But again, it's only for your scholastics. It's not intramural. Is that correct? Did, did I read that? But so much of I mean, it's, it's, <coughs> it's much smaller. I believe it's actually. all sports. Okay. Including intramural. Then, so then physicals are not required for intramurals. Not for not for fourth graders fourth or fifth graders. Fourth graders. I was right. going to say, I right. had fifth graders right. that may play a sport, they are required. Yeah, well, that's interscholastic sports. There's a, a definite line, a division line there, but I understood <coughs> it to be just interscholastic sports and not intramurals. Physicals. It says this any student in eighth grade, grade who is trying out for a sport or interested in playing intramurals during the school year will need to update a physical form and try out to play. And the physicals have always been for intramurals as well. So that's, that's what this, now I haven't always been. Okay. Okay. Six, 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 six. Recent years, not always. But now you have that on top mm -hmm. of this health of the question right. right there's an actual form right, right. Exactly. my biggest concern is the night i'm thinking the night the 90 days the first 90 days comes in isn't basketball season already in full swing before that 90 days up no that's uh, basketball will start basically the second 
week of November. Okay. It's usually the first Monday after election day. Right. But your 90 days is up the end of November. Mm -hmm. Okay. So gotcha. I know with all the new paperwork, Ms. Kerslick has really been um, advocating that parents do not wait until the last minute to reach out to their doctors and um, make sure that everything's done for September. So all the forms are online on the main page for Maryville School. All three forms are listed there with the description of changes, health history, and athletic physical form. So that is already available online. Now does our policy reflect um, as far as who approved, which physician has to approve of their physical prowess to participate in sports? Does it state their family? As a part of the form that Ms. Kerslick um, gave me to post, it states that not only did the physician would have to provide a copy that they completed and that they met all the requirements. There's actually a small little thing that physicians need to do mm -hmm. to receive a certification to be able to authorize a student to play sports. And they would have to provide a copy of that. So the nurses were discussing about speaking with local physicians in the area to find out which ones hold that certification when parents okay. ask for recommendations. Okay. Now, the physicians in the mini clinics or the urgent care facilities? They would have to check with those individual okay. physicians to see if they met the requirements prior okay. to daily. Just something this person has to do. Any other concerns or comments for the nurses report? Buildings and grounds? Any questions or there? I'll just comment that I saw the buildings and grounds people out all day last Saturday getting this property beautiful for the eighth grade dance. He worked very hard all day. I was out there for soccer and I literally watched them for hours and it looked great. The other thing I want to say is that this summer I anticipate a lot of work getting done. Let's just pray for good weather because it's all going to be outside. Okay. So, I mean, there's some inside things, but most of it's going to be outside. Everybody's going to stay outside. Good, thank you. Special education report? Thank you. Questions? Okay, let's move on to other, uh, move on to other reports. PTA? <coughs> uh, how about committee reports? Kent County Education Services Commission? Very good. And I would have to chime in with you and say the same thing with New Jersey School Boards. We'll be meeting next in November, but I will be a, a, attending. Uh, they've asked the delegates to really participate in this sustainable workshop on July 29th, and I will submit a report to all board members and the superintendent. Is that the Sustainability Summit? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's July 29th. I'll be there. Uh, Samantha is not here this evening, so we'll pass on the blockage pipe. And any negotiation comments at this time? We have the. Um, we have the administration, um, principals, and supervisors um, contract to share with the board at second, second session. session. Yes. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> okay, at this time I need a motion on the property and transportation items that are listed in tonight's agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve the following items. One second. Thank you. Naomi, Pat? Is it there? Yes. I want to see if there's any questions. I, yeah, I, I have questions, questions. So I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we would be approving um, for St. Teresa's to use the all-purpose room for basketball during the that same. Was, that was brought up in the nights that was used by all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. the will not conflict. Okay. The only nice I'll have would be the nice one that always on the wall. Gotcha. Go for it. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. That's good. Anything else? Any other questions? Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yes. Ms. Trebach Hunt? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Smith? <clears throat> yes. Ms. Trello? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. I need a motion on the floor for personnel. That's Smith. I'll second Any questions? Mr. Trello? Yes. Oh, I thought it was. <laughs> Go 
going backwards now. That's okay. I'll go backwards. Miss Smith. <laughs> I think you should shake your hand. Shake your hand. Miss Smith? Yes. <laughs> Miss Panzerella? Yes. Miss Davidson? Yes. Mr. Buckhead? Yes. Miss Beebe? Yes. Miss Deck? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Actually, to make a comment on that, Dr. McCarran, when I attended my first school board uh, session workshops, <clears throat> That's what they recommended that the business administrator did. Was shake it up. Yes. <laughs> Keep the board members away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 One of our interns did. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't come first ever. <laughs> Finance. Any uh, motion, please? I'd like Pardon. to make a motion to um, approve items number 1 through 36. That's all I have. Any questions? Items 1 through 36. non-agenda items at this time. Please remember that the public is reminded that they should attempt to resolve these problems and or complaints through initial contact with the staff member or members involved therein and the chief school administrator prior to petitioning the Board of Education. Complaints should only be brought to the board after the appropriate school staff has had a reasonable opportunity to resolve the problem at the employee level. Statements should be limited to three minutes in length. The public is reminded that all public uh, complaints against a district employee must be made through a specific grievance process. The description of this process may be found in the Board of Education Policy, File Code 0167. And this policy is available upon request in the Office of the Board Secretary. Any individual naming an employee in a complaint before the Board of Education without the employee's permission will be cited for violating that employee's civil rights and contractual rights. So at this time, are there any public comments, not agenda items? Yes, please identify yourself. You're all <laughs> I just want to thank the board for all your cooperation and support over the past eight months. Um, I want to thank Mark and Sean for their uh, leadership in the district. And, and I'm pleased to say that, that I'm walking out the door, things are running very, very smoothly. Uh, the reorganization of the board office and the uh, other reorganizations that have happened recently, including the cafeteria program and a few others, I think are going to lead this district. Uh, well into the future and you know, very smooth. Uh, you folks are a great group of people to work with. I've mentioned to Mark and Sean a couple times, don't ever leave here. <laughs> 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 um, 
I also want to thank the other administrators and the other support people that I've worked with. It's been a great place and, and really an enjoyable experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Based on what um, those, those Mr. Balkan said and what you said, and I actually said that to you while you were still sitting here. How much I think the board, and I speak, I think I can speak for everyone, appreciates what you have brought to us as a board. And I, I can probably speak for most of the board when I say this has probably been one of the most pleasant years in my being on the board ever. I mean, at first it was, you know, it was horrible, and it has definitely become. And I think, you know, the board, the change in board members and the administration has. Just me that it, that it took completely pleasant compared to what it was. So I thank each and every one of you, my fellow board members, as well as the administration here, not only as a board member, but as a parent of children in the district. It's huge what this district has done, you know. So I thank all of you. And Earl, I can't thank, hey, Earl, are you going to be around just in case? I mean, in case I'm anybody's got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I just want to make sure. <laughs> you know. I do have a resolution to read at this time. Be resolved by the Rummy Board of Education, County of Camden, New Jersey, that the Open Public Meetings <coughs> Act requires that advanced written notice of all meetings of the Board of Education be posted in one public place designated by the board in mail, telephone, fax, or hand delivered to two newspapers designated by resolution, mailed to all persons requesting a copy of the same upon payment of a fee as established by NJSA 47-1A-2. At this time, I want to announce to the public that are here, we are now going to be going into executive session. And I think I have a lengthy text to read at this time. Yes. <laughs> Resolved by the Rummy Board, uh, Board of Education as follows. All advance written notices of board meetings shall be posted by the board secretary of the Bolton Board located in Marybone School, Race Downing Elementary School, Ailing Bingham Elementary School. Two, all advance written notices of board meetings shall be given to the following two newspapers. The Retrospect, our official newspaper, and the Courier Post. Three, filing written notice with the clerk of Runnemy Borough. Four, all advance written notices of board mm -hmm. Meetings throughout the year shall be mailed to all persons requesting a copy of same after payment by such persons of a fee as established by NJSA 47 1A 2 plus postage. <clears throat> News media shall be exempt from such a fee. And five, the schedule of regular official board meetings for the period from and after this reorganization meeting until the reorganization meeting in 2014 shall be in accordance with the listed schedule designating the dates, times, and places of such meetings. <coughs> For executive session, whereas while the Senator, starting at that point, right? Uh, Senator Ryan Bear, Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 1 2, requires all meetings of the Rodney School District Board of Education to be held in public. NJSA 10 colon 4 12 B sets forth nine types of matters that may lawfully be discussed in executive session without the public being permitted to attend. And whereas the Rodney Public School District Board of Education has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain matters which are exempted from the public. And whereas the nine exceptions to public meetings set forth in NJSA 10 colon 4 12 B are listed below. And next to each exception is a box within which the number of issues to be privately discussed to fall within that exception shall be written. And after each exception is a space where additional information that will disclose as much information about the decision as possible without undermining the purpose of the exception shall be written. Now therefore be it resolved that the Rodney Public School District Board of Education will go into closed session for the following reason or reasons as outlined. And we will be going to close the executive session for any collective bargaining agreement or the terms and conditions of which are proposed for inclusion in any collective bargaining agreement, including the negotiation of terms and conditions with employees or representatives of employees of the public body. Whereas the length of the executive session is 
Undetermined, however, the Romney Public School District Board of Education will make every attempt to establish the time of the session prior to convening the session, after which the public meeting shall reconvene 30 minutes from the start time. And Romney Public School District Board of Education will proceed with business. We estimate it will be about 30 minutes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Romney Public School District Board of Education will go into executive session for the above item that I just read. Be it further resolved that the Romney Public School District Board of Education hereby declares that its discussion of the aforementioned subject may be made public at a time when the Romney Public School District Board of Education attorney advises that the disclosure of the discussion will not uh, detrimentally affect any right, interest, or duty of the school district or any other entity with respect to said discussion. Be it further resolved that the Romney Public School District Board of Education for the aforementioned reasons hereby declares that the public is excluded from the portion of the meeting during which the above discussion shall take place and hereby directs the board secretary to take the appropriate action to effectuate the terms of this resolution be it further resolved that the board secretary on the next business day following this meeting shall furnish a copy of this resolution to any member of the public who requests one at the fees allowed by njsa 47 colon 1a-1 action on any item may or may not be taken in this open, uh, open session at the conclusion of the executive session. Okay. Can I have a motion I to go into executive session? Uh, Maria okay. and Patrick. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? It's a call. It's call the general session back into session, or a general board meeting back into session at this time. We have one item to deal with. Two. Two? Oh, the revision? Oh, the hand? Uh, you want to do it? We're waiting for the to yes. Right? So we're going to do it August because we're going to add the table contents and give them time to go through and see if there's something else they want to add. Yes, I agree. Do we have time for retreat and board meeting schedule or what are we doing for August? Yeah, has everyone to add I asked the 20th, but I don't have any time. Is the 12 to 2 work? If we have to do it on the 20th, I would really appreciate it if we didn't get like 1230-ish. Oh, because then I can leave work at 12 and we use a half a day into the evening. Okay. okay. The hours. So August so 20th. I, I'll do August 20th. 1215? 1230 because of traffic. Yeah, I might take me to And that would be the retreat start time? Um, yeah. That would be a retreat start time? Yes. Yeah. Would you like to say one to three and then do the board meeting at four? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> one to yeah. three retreat. Yeah. We should we'll three o'clock for a session. Time. Four o'clock for a session. Can you say that one time? <laughs> so one. one to three retreat. Okay. Three o'clock work session. Four o'clock meeting. Mm -hmm. Three o'clock board meeting. Do you want to just say three o'clock meeting then? Yeah, why don't you do that? And then if people have questions regarding the agenda, we'll take them as we make the motion. So three o'clock meeting. Sorry, three p.m. Yeah. All right, let's put that up. Thank you. And I'll be sending you a, uh, an update in July. Okay. I will send that to you electronically. Cool. Do you have a target date for that up July update? Um, so yeah, I, I, think, I, I believe last year I did it the week of the actual show. That's the right Right. Yeah. 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 to approve the negotiated contract with the Runnymede Administrative Association and the adjusted salary guide for the 2014-15 school year. I'll pay Pat. I'll first. No, no Pat, 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 Pat,
questions? Any, yes, any questions on the agreement? No. Um, Ms. Pizzarella? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Torillo? Yes. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. He did really good. I did up, right? I love it. I love it. I was first. Okay, so I will text it. It's not in here, but we got paper. How about I just give it to you? I don't have it. I do. Of what? I have it right now. Yeah, I can get it. I don't want to say it out loud. I like to. You're in the meeting. I make a motion. Maria? I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 